Hi, this is David Sankoff, and I'd like to talk about combining syntony and similarity-based inference on the polyploidization fractionation cycle. In plant comparative genomics, a common type of data is a gene pair similarity distribution. The peaks in this distribution represent ancient polyploidization events. So here we have one triplication event, also called hexaploidization, followed by a duplication event called tetraploidization. We resume this in the following type of diagram, where the triplication is at T1, the duplication is at T2, and the observations of the gene surviving fractionation are at the present time, and these are all the trajectories. This is summarized in the probability measure P, where R is the ploidy vector, 2, 3, 4, whatever. MI is the number of genes in generation I. Each of these genes gives rise to R copies, and A counts the number of genes for each of these copies that survive. U is the retention rate or the multinomial probabilities. We also have the partial trajectories, uh, the measure on the partial trajectories between the H and K generations. However, this only generates the number of genes in each generation. We need for this, for these data, the number of pairs of genes. To get that, we can multiply the expectations from three independent events, one from, G, from M1, from the time R1 to time TI, count the number of pairs, and then for each of these pairs, count the number between ti plus 1 and the present day and we get we can predict the number of pairs unfortunately there are too many parameters uh, for this type of data there's too many parameters to explain this type of data we're using our branching process for example in this case we have uh, two equations. The, the measure reduces to this, these two equations in this case, and there are three parameters. U is the probability of retaining two genes instead of one. U prime is the probability of changing, retaining three. And V is the probability of retaining two after this second event. To get around this, we look at the Synteny block that gave the original data. These synteny blocks are subject to fractionation, and you can see the empty circles represent genes that are lost through fractionations, and each one of them has a, a partner which is not lost, and uh, we count these singletons, and we can predict them using the same measure. So now, instead of two equations for three parameters, we have four equations for three parameters, and this gives us the luxury of adding in another parameter that we can estimate the uh, number of genes in the original population before the first event. Unfortunately, there's another problem with the data, and that is uh, the earlier events give rise to synteny blocks, which we cannot observe very, very well. We can, we can observe them, but they've lost uh, a lot of genes. Some of them have disappeared because they're not long enough for the software, and uh, th the software won't accept synteny blocks that are shorter than some default. And there's a general... Uh, downward 
bias to estimating the MI for the early events and an upward bias for estimating the par parameters and this, this becomes very severe. We can get around this by just multiplying each MI by a constant which we can infer if we have enough equations. So this becomes C, the, cr the crumble constant is added in in two of the equations. And this happens in general whenever we have more parameters than two per, uh, more retention rates than two. If Ri is bigger than two, we have extra parameters. However, we can get around this thing by assuming that the number of genes that are lost follow a, a binomial distribution based on a loss probability of p, and with that we can find that uh, the in this case that the u prime, the probability of retaining three genes, is somewhere between u squared and u cubed, as long as u is not too big, or between 0 and 0 0.4. Now I'd like to talk about five uh, plants that we've analyzed, among many others, uh, which have different uh, histories. So the durian is it has had a triplication and followed by a triplication. The first triplication on the left is the gamma distribution at the origin of the core u dicots. And uh, we'll, I'll just say, that if you look at the number of genes in, uh, estimated for the original population, you get over 16,000. For poplar, which is a triplication followed by a duplication, uh, we get 17,000 using that model. For linen, which also has the same uh, early gamma triplication as the other two, we get 16,000 for the estimate. Black pepper, which I just showed because it's not a core or eudicot, it has a duplication followed by a duplication, and we get a different number of genes at the origin, of course, different part of the plant phylogeny. And finally, salvia, which has a three events, we don't know what the middle one is, but whatever one we use, we get around 13, 14,000, not far off the other ones. Thank you.